Hello, everybody. Eric Worre here, and we are with another of our top earners. And this is a couple. These are two people who are working together in order to be able to grow their business. They're part of our Next Level Mastermind, and they're dear friends. Please welcome to the show, Jared and Crystal Krebs. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing well, thank you for yeah, having yeah. us. Yeah, I came in from San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas, which isn't as hot as Vegas. It's but it's more humid. Yeah. Yes. So Very what do you prefer, the heat of Vegas or the heat and humidity of San Antonio? I like oh. them both. Yeah? <laughs> he does. I don't. You no? Know? Maybe the dry heat because it's better for my hair, but... <laughs> what would be your preference? What's your perfect climate? What do you mm, like? I mean, West Coast is probably really nice because it's just, you know, very, very... We just very got back perfect. from Carlsbad and it was like 74 degrees. Yeah. Nice light breeze. Always perfect, yeah. Yeah, pretty nice for this time of year anyway for us. But anyway, welcome. Cool. Glad welcome, to be Welcome, here. welcome, welcome. You. you guys are, are builders growing your network marketing business. You're part of our Next Level Mastermind. And uh, for those of you watching, that's a, a group of people, six-figure earners and above inside of network marketing that um, get together in order to be able to share ideas on how to do better. But I want to talk to you guys about your journey. And uh, with couples, it's always interesting because... <laughs> Who started the business and who joined later? I started and she joined four years later. Yeah. Four years later. So you mm. started and what what um, what caused you to start? So I had uh, just graduated from college and uh, University of North Texas. Shout out Denton. Yeah. And uh, I was a jazz guitar professional. Really? I was playing music all over the place in the Dallas Metroplex area. And I watched my teachers kind of struggle with like finances, health, things like that. And I was already looking for like online business type things, even in college, because I thought I don't want to be a struggling musician. And so I was doing things and uh, I found network marketing shortly after I graduated college. And I just said, this is what I need to do. I want to build a, a very strong residual income and then have the time to play music. Do you, do you still play music? I do. Yeah. yeah? Are you yeah. in a band or anything? Uh, no. You know, I, I really, I think my passion has changed over over the years. I mean, we've been 15 years now with our company and right. everything. So um, I've actually kind of switched my hobby into salsa dancing, believe it or not. Ah. So, uh, are you a salsa uh, dancer? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's very much his passion. It's not quite mine, but I very much support him. I I can dance and it's not like I can't. I just yeah. choose not to. You look like the salsa dancer. He does it. I know. I can totally fit in. But I'm like <laughs> totally like go dance with everybody. Like do your thing. She's yeah. supportive. I'm she's not supportive. jealous. She's yeah. cool. She's the best. So I want so. to enjoy it. Thanks. And you know, I'll support yes. him on his birthdays. That's what he gets. To She'll go <laughs> once a year to salsa with me. So you do like a weekly salsa thing? I do, yes. Yeah. Prior to the pandemic, I would go every Tuesday night and then once a month on Saturdays. Yeah. And I was on a dance team for like three or four years and like, wow. you know. You're a creative I'm, soul. Yes, I'm into it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so were you always creative your whole life? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I into was the always arts? into the arts. Yeah. I started on piano and um, found guitar and was very committed from maybe age 14 to 25. Just incredibly committed to guitar. Mm. I can play jazz and bebop and all the, the stuff and... Um, but yeah, I just decided that if I'm going to spend my free time, uh, I want to I want to dance. I Ooh. like this awesome music. I don't want to learn the music. It's so hard to play. Like it's so much more fun to dance. So yeah, <laughs> it's just late. late Tell late, me about so. you growing up. Were you were you entrepreneurial? Were you a good student? Bad student? Um, actually, I was a good student, and I was. Um, so I'll tell you the best story I can think of. When I was 12 years old, my parents. Um, they said you cannot play in the backyard until the lawn has been mowed. And I don't remember this, but they tell me this is what happened. So I had my friends all bring lawn mowers, and they all mowed the lawn while I told I kind of directed my friends <laughs> mowing the lawn, and we got the job done and we could play. And my parents were like, they just noted they remembered that. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess I recruited my friends to help yeah, mow the lawn. The, the you old know? Tom so, Sawyer thing. Yeah, get other people to paint but, the fence. Yeah. So. I guess that was kind of, I mean, I always had like little things as a kid, you know, we did a candy store, we would sell candy on the side of our like driveway. I lived in like suburban, you know, Utah, which is like <laughs> interesting, right. but um, yeah, so I always did little entrepreneurial things growing up and see, you know, I, yeah. I, I was entrepreneurial thinking, but not the entrepreneurial discipline. Oh, uh, okay. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I'd like to be a business for myself, but no, I don't want to work. Uh, uh -huh. You know what I mean? I was kind of 
it sounds like you're pretty disciplined in your life. Like yeah, I've always the, been. The yeah. music and the passions and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's much, uh, you know, you kind of have to be a grinder on that type of stuff. You know, right. Working, practicing so many hours a day and all that stuff. Right, right, right. So, How about you growing up? What were you like? Um, I think I was definitely more in that, like, I, I was more that leadership person, like with our cousins and just friends. Um, I remember doing, we would do like dance choreography and like perform it in front of like our family at like Easter or like right. whatever, but I would be like directing everybody and like teaching them the choreography. And, and then I think even when I was really little, we would, I don't know, we would create some sort of like drawings and stuff. And then we'd like open our store and have like my grandma come in or my mom with right. like, you know, a nickel or a dime to like buy our creations. So it was always something that you know, something fun to, I don't know, make money right. <laughs> or to just direct people. How long have you guys been together? 10 years. Ten. Yeah. 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 Almost 10. 10. 2010. And you yeah. were working on your own for a while. Uh, yes. Of this business. So I, uh, I started out with my network marketing company and I was in a different city mm -hmm. and, but my, my mentor lived in San Antonio and I was in Denton, which is like five hours from San Antonio. So it was like after a couple of years, he was like, man, if you came to San Antonio, we could build something together. We, you know, like he kind of sold me on that vision and I was single. I didn't have, you know, any reason to stay in that city. So I, I moved to San Antonio and my, my mentor drove the U-Haul and I drove my, my Mercedes E350, which was like my first nice car, you know, <laughs> we went down to San Antonio and I got a little apartment and I just started, I hit the pavement. What were you doing prior to this? Um, prior to network marketing, yeah. uh, I was teaching guitar lessons. So that gave mm -hmm. you enough to buy your Mercedes E350? No, the, uh, the the network marketing company uh, business did. Business So, did. yeah. Okay. So I was I had so created you, an income about in about two years' time where I could afford right, something nice right, and, right, right. and still show something that I, I had achieved in the industry. But, right. um, yeah. So. So, you, so you moved down there and did you guys meet down there? Yes. Right. So, what a couple were you years. doing at the time? Mm -hmm. I had just moved back from um, college. I, was, I went to college in Florida and Tampa. And then. Um, I was kind of, I kind of hung around there for a little bit and was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me go home and like, cause I'm from Texas Let me like regroup myself. And when I moved back, um, my dad was in the military. So my parents were in San Antonio. So that's mm. how I ended up there. But actually we ended up, I was there in 2008. I came back in 2008 and I think he went there in 2000, but we didn't meet each other for two years after that. But I was just. So how'd you meet? What's the story? In, well, actually I enrolled the yeah. salsa dance, um, ballroom, like the, the person who owned the ballroom. Yeah. So I enrolled them in our company and I started to mentor and grow their business with them. And, and, um, they prospected crystal I was in two months later. I was in this dancing yeah. with the stars phase. So I'm like, I'm going to go and learn how to ballroom dance. Cause you know, it was just the thing to do. And that's how I ended up. That's how you guys person. met. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, it was, uh, I guess it was just meant to be because <laughs> we pretty much hit it off right away. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've been together ever since. So. It's been a good, a good thing. Yeah, network marketing. You can find yeah, you know, health, wealth, and love. <laughs> and love. <laughs> so we dated. We dated for three years okay. while we built separate businesses. Mm -hmm. We didn't combine businesses yet at that point, and um, we started to go to like different training seminars. We went to several GoPros and we went to some other training seminars, and we just made the decision to get married. We we're like, well, let's let's do this, you know, right. and. Um, we started, I mean, kind of later in life, I was 35, she was 34 when we, when we got our first, both of our first marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we're planning our wedding and we're like, okay, let's do our health checkups. And Crystal gets diagnosed with cervical cancer. Wow. So we had to put our wedding on hold and it was serious. I mean, it had actually spread into the lymph nodes, like things like she had to do straight chemo, radiation and, um, you know. How scary is that? Yeah, it was crazy, but it was, I never really was allowed myself to be like in that victim space. And I think a lot because of all the personal development and growth and leadership that we've been doing and just working on our, like I, I knew where I needed to be like mindset wise. And yeah, it was definitely scary, but I was just like, Oh, okay, well, we're going to do this and I'm just going to, we're going to get through it. It's going to be fine. And it'll be not that big a deal. <laughs> so how long was the process of going through the treatment? So, um, I was initially supposed to have a hysterectomy and that was like the cure. So that happened at the very end of, of the de December, like 31st, so at the very end of the year. And when I came to, they were like, well, we biopsied the lymph nodes, it spread. Now you're actually going to have to go in and do chemo and radiation. So that, 
process. Um, I didn't start for about a month after that because I was still recovering from the surgery because they did do a, a few things. And um, probably three months-ish, um, I went in. It was like March to May. I, well, I got my port in February and then at the end of or very beginning of May was my very last treatment. But going through, I had 28 days of external radiation, five of internal and six weeks of chemo. And it was just like, okay, we're just going to go. Did that this. change you in any way? I mean, did the whole process change the way you look at life, change the way your emotional, you know, the way you think? Yeah, it definitely did. I mean, it, it made me really take a pause and reflect on like what the dis-ease was going on inside of me. And also just seeing life completely different. It's like I'm having a second chance to go and do something big. And it's a huge opportunity and just really going through, um, finding a lot of my internal strength. And that was like really, really powerful. Because even after that, I mean, there's, we've done a lot of great stuff since then. So right. it's, it's definitely- this is how many years ago? Uh, six years. Six years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've been clean and you go get your checkups. Yep. How everything. often do you get your checkups? Uh, now it's like once a year. Once a year? Nice. Yeah. And everything's been... Oh, she so just great. had her last scan, another clear scan. Been so good. Yeah. 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 So yeah. when did you guys get married then? Uh, so six months after she completed her treatments. So mm -hmm. December. So yeah, December 2014. And that was like a celebration of Crystal's life just mm. as much as our, our wedding, you know, yeah. and we had all of our team members there and all of our uh, best clients, our family. And it was at the top of um, one of the big buildings in San Antonio Riverwalk. And it was like just such a beautiful occasion, you know, but I think it was mostly because Crystal was yeah. Had, had made it through, you yeah. know, How great is and, that? and I have to say too, that, you know, our network marketing company really impacted our, I mean, from we're in health and wellness, mm -hmm. not to make health claims. I mean, she still had to do the chemo sure, and sure. everything, but the products really supported her immune system, helped her with that recovery. And then also the, the, the money and the time to mm -hmm. be there for her, uh, to take her to all of her appointments, to do all the things that create some freedom. Doesn't yeah. It? To be there for her. And, um, I mean, I remember being in like chemo with her and, and, um, doing my, my texts, my calls, my networking, whatever in the, you know, while she was getting her chemo, things like right. that, just because I could be there, you know, and take her to appointments. So that, uh, that freedom was that matters, out. you know? Yeah. A lot of people don't have that, uh, that freedom at all. Yeah. And we actually even, uh, went to, to Brazil and had her see a healer. Um, we were able to take some time like? off. It was amazing. It was really cool. It was, was it? It, it was, it was such a, like a magical experience. We were there for two weeks. And I mean, it just, I think that really also helped because this was at the very beginning before I even was going into the surgery and everything. So we, part of it was we were getting married and I'm supposed to have this hysterectomy. We're not going to have kids. Mm. Like we had to really come to terms and like evaluate, okay, what do we need to do? And when we came back, we were definitely more at peace with like, it's mm. okay. Like we're not, we don't have to have kids. We can always adopt if we want to, but you know, we, that piece came from that. But also I think it really helped um, like kick off for me that journey of like spiritually, physically, mentally, like going after whatever this was. And I mean, we made some really great friends. Do you think it's manifest from spirit or do you think it's just something that happens? I think it's a little bit of both. Huh. I think there's definitely different energies that are going on, you know, within our body and we hold on to a lot of things when we're young. And I mean, I was working on a lot of forgiveness and just letting go of things that are just sitting there, I guess. Um, what was the biggest part of that? I mean, I know you didn't probably plan on this. What, what was the, <laughs> what was the biggest thing that you, uh, that you felt like you needed to release? Talk about forgiveness. Yeah. It, it wasn't even big things. It was like the little things that maybe weren't that big of a thing I thought like in college with like relationships or friendships or just, just little things that you would just hold on to and not quite hold a grudge, but it would just kind of linger there. Um, I would just, you know, be forgiving specific people and that forgiveness isn't always about like whatever they did. It's li it's really like releasing you from having that burden in that, you know? So for me, it was just chipping away at like all these little things that I didn't even think were affecting me, mm -hmm. but they were. And I mean, I just was 
you know, day after day, just like peeling these layers and just feeling better. And, and I think that really helped also just to clear my mental space for when I did go in and actually have to go through the treatments and everything mm. to, you know, to feed myself good food. Like I, you know, I, had, I was reading a lot of Hay House, author, Hay House authors and um, books and just listening to great, you know, great uh, things. Like they say, everything happens for a reason, right? Oh, it's yeah. just like, mm-hmm. you know, everything's designed to give us some sort of lesson. Oh, yeah, Whatever completely. Happens, including our network marketing experience. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. <laughs> think about how many lessons we've learned inside That's of right. network marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it, I indirectly manifested a, um, my story <laughs> for, the, right, for like, right? our company. Not like, you know, but yeah, just in no. a way that happened. I mean, it, 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 it ended up being able to help more people. Oh, completely. Yeah. Because you've gone through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so powerful. And I really love, you know, sharing my story with people who are going through that and just giving them hope and just you know, that it, you, they can get through it and yeah. there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm going to ask some questions of, of, of both of you and, and they can be different answers. Okay. And they <laughs> probably will be. I'll start with you. Okay. What's your favorite thing about network marketing? Uh, I just, I love getting to know new people and just obviously me particularly helping health, you know, with, with the health of, of, you know, if they're going through something like I did or just in general, because it's like, who wants to feel crappy? Like when people realize how great they can actually feel, like I love seeing that because they, they realize, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I really, you know, I enjoy the people and, and just having, having their success stories and having them feel good because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you? What's your favorite thing? Two things. Uh, number one is the schedule. I love being able to like wake up when I want to wake up, be able to take time off, be here for five days instead of one day to come and interview with you. Um, just the, the schedule, the time freedom of that being, you know, I still work hard, but I have my mornings and I can do my workouts in the morning. And mm-hmm. I've, I've never worked for anybody. I mean, I was a guitar teacher, graduated, started this in, at age 25. I'm 40. So I've been my entire adult life pretty much in network marketing only as my main in- income. So uh, I don't know what it's like to have to go to a job and do. And you, you probably know, that. never will. I, I highly doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? At some point, you so, become unemployable. That's pretty much where I'm at, you know. And and I just I love I love the lifestyle of it, you know. Okay. So that's number one, and number two, well, they're kind of one and one A, but it's just the relationships, you know, the great people. It's like I think the people that have come into our team, it's like those people were meant to be our team members, you know, and. Some people stay for a long time. Some people stay for a season, but it's just like um, helping them succeed, seeing them grow. It's just addicting, you know, when you see your team members have success. Well, the, the weird so. thing about our business that that people don't really understand is if you take a look at the average person's life, who they get to spend time with. They spend time with people they go to work with and they spend time with their family. And then there's a few other people that just touch their lives for a second, Mm -hmm. okay? And they might not like the people that they work with, but they have to. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they they can tolerate them. They like a few of them. A bunch of them are super annoying. Mm -hmm. But we have, uh, we've created a financial excuse to be able to hang out with positive people. 100%. All the time. Yeah. All the time. See them, interact with them, be encouraged by them, encourage them back. and, and if we choose not to hang out with any of them, we have that choice. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's, it's really unique only hanging out with people that you want to spend time with and having the, the ability to do that, you know, unless, you know, there's some negative people in your family, then you got to deal with that. But you know what I'm saying? 100%. Most yeah. of the time. Yeah. I remember walking into the hotel meeting, like for the first time and I was just, Kind of blown away. I was, why, why is, is everybody, everybody so, hugging? Why is everybody why so are they all happy? Hug- What's going on? I'm like, yeah. oh, I want more of this because everybody's just so happy. And they're and like, encouraging just, and they're nice. It's such great. There's not mean, nasty wow. people for, yeah. for the most part. <laughs> you know, there's a few people that have been trained to be mean from a young age, right? Mm-hmm. But, but mostly it's really positive. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's switch to the other side of the coin. What's one thing that you don't necessarily love? What's your least favorite thing about network marketing? Mm. Think the negative for a minute. Be honest now. For me, it's it's the 
consistency and discipline that he has. That's the balance we have. You don't like you. You'd rather I, like, just be a free spirit. And... I I kind of yeah. That's more me. I just kind of want to do it when I want to do it, and it sometimes <laughs> isn't the con- best. Uh... The need for consistency is not your favorite thing. I think it's the fact that I'm not as consistent, so that really kind of bothers me because I can't be that way. And I do my, I, I get on a roll for a little bit, but then. Listen, I, sister, I was that, I did that my whole like, career. I still do that today. The struggle is real. My team would tell you right now, <laughs> I'm not a consistent guy. Um, I'm rebellious to structured authority. Yeah. I could have tripled my network marketing career income easy by being more consistent. Mm-hmm. But part of it was self-worth, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd get really going and then I'd sabotage for no reason. I would sabotage my own mm-hmm. team, you know, by not showing up, by not being consistent, by not being disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, it worked out, but still, I Just understand a, that feeling. That struggle. The like, feeling yeah. of, if I ever got my shit together, man, I'd be, I'd be so much better. My team would be so much better. And the guilt <laughs> of somebody, you know, needing you and you not being there for yeah. them. That kind of thing. How about you? What's your least favorite thing? Uh, attrition. Spending time working with somebody and then just having them quit or having them... Having an, having uh, invested. Having invested in the time, your mm-hmm. heart, your soul into them and their success and their business. And then for whatever reason, they just... They fade. They just fade or they don't show up anymore to the calls or they tell me straight up, you know, they're not... They don't want to continue or... Um, I mean, I've seen it all. You know, I've had yeah. team members... Um, they they join another company or they think the grass is greener somewhere else or they um, they just they just don't stand the test of time you know mm-hmm. and um, I think I've become a lot better at um, not getting so emotionally attached and you know like they say discipline your disappointments things like that mm-hmm. like um, and then also um, one thing that's really helped me is not to project my past experiences onto my, my new team members, hmm. right? Like, um, I heard not Brian to Carruthers, expect them to quit, not to expect them to quit. Correct. Yeah. So like I heard Brian Carruthers sh- share this, um, at a GoPro, actually one of my first GoPros is, um, that he talked about exa- exactly that expect, um, expecting someone to succeed and tell them, I expect you to succeed. And so like this latest generation of our team is like, we have people winning trips, we have people staying, we have people engaged, we have, but it's a lot of the things we're learning from the next level mastermind, the contest, the campaigns, the incentives, the, you know, the, the culture we've been able to create. So our retention has gone way up, mm. you know, but if I was to say a, a part that I don't like about it is of course, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. believe so. What's, um, come back to you, what, what's been one of your biggest challenges in, in learning how to become a network marketing professional? So I think the biggest challenge I had was, so we had separate businesses or, and when we got engaged, we married our business. So then I, I rank advanced really fast and mm-hmm. that was good. <laughs> but at the same time, I know I wasn't at that leadership level yet. So I had to really like, oh my gosh, like now I'm actually in this leadership position. People are going to start really focusing more on me um, as he likes to call me the first lady of our business. Um, So for me, that was kind of challenging just because I didn't know that self-worth part of it. Like I, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to lead a team? Um, People are going to be coming to me for guidance. Am I going to have an answer for them? And I mean, the fact that we were we had been going to a lot of the events together and you know learning and growing together like i think that definitely helped me but i i really dove in and had to work on myself a lot at, during that mostly part. just being okay with not being perfect yeah yeah exactly. you know letting go of that, all that stuff and just rolling with it exactly eh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I, you know, do you have the answer nope but i'll go no, figure I it out exactly so yeah. that was in that moment definitely really challenging for me but i you know, we are passed it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Are you, are you still I think I, it? I think I fluctuate sometimes. Yeah. Um, that's fair, but definitely much better. People space. love her. <laughs> People love her. It, like anytime crystal is on a webinar or like she's been leading our skincare webinars, she's like transformed our company, like not just our team. She <laughs> created this, we've, we've mentioned the sip and scrub concept, but mm-hmm. it's basically sending a, a skincare sample, doing a, a, a zoom meeting. 
And it's taken this whole life of its own within all the, basically the females of our company. And Chris, it was Crystal's idea. And she's, mm. she's being featured at our international convention, uh, launching the skincare line this month and like actually next week mm -hmm. so she's <laughs> actually now taken a big step i mean they asked her to speak not me at the big <laughs> convention you know and that makes me happy i mean that's like i'm very proud of you babe yeah. <laughs> so cool how about you what what's been a challenge for you systems hmm. i was born into a network network marketing team when i say born right I, my first experience with my current company we i mean it was like 06 07 so it was flip charts hotel meetings it was it was very regimented. Everybody agreed on the same presentation. Everything, and, and I thought that was just normal, right? Like as a new rep, you just do what, what the system is. Um, but then over the years, when um, social media came in, in into play, and then also um, even even just basic webinars, like people started making their own presentation, and now the whole company fragmented. And so now people were doing presentations with this PowerPoint and a different one for that PowerPoint for that team, and so. I had to come to a point where, okay, what are we going to do, <laughs> you know, and how are, how is our team going to, to move forward? And that's where I found so much value working with you because we, you, I mean, when you talk about um, the 10 systems that people need to have a customer acquisition system, a customer retention system, a distributor acquisition system, a distributor retention system, a core rank system, um, a, a presentation system, I had to think through all that for us. And slowly start to implement these things, right? Like you say, they take time to develop the systems. Um, so we've been doing that and we've really seen like great duplication from that. And I think one of the main things you said that really just like, like um, rung true with for me is that it's not the company's responsibility to make those systems. Like distributors expect, oh, maybe the company should have all this Mm -hmm. made but the company's not out in the field dealing with these issues in real time in real time and so that's actually like i need to spend a portion of my day or a portion of my week like like you said about spending um, a percentage of the time in system development and campaign development and then a, a portion of my time into prospecting new people and a mm -hmm. portion into being there for the existing team and um so i've started to apply those things and it's like i feel like i pull a thorn out of my side like I, I'm, I'm addressing these core issues that are preventing us from, from scaling, yeah. right? So, and then having all the friends that we're meeting in this mastermind also and seeing how they do it. And then, oh, can I see you're getting started training? Oh, sure. And they share they're getting started training. I'm like, oh. you know, to have like some, to see someone else's training and being able to say, okay, I can take that and make that for us. Yep. So I'm jazzed, you know, this is just, uh, it's kind of like a new breath of fresh air for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Back to you. Uh, Tell me something that you're really proud of, that you, you know, that proud of, not what he's going to say about you, but what you're going to say about you. <laughs> What's something that you're really proud of in, in building your network marketing business? Um, I'm proud that I get to grow and I'm very proud, honestly, of what he mentioned, the sip and scrub, that concept, that idea. Um, it was me and three other girls, we have a women's event uh, for the company. And so we had this back in February and we were like, we're, we want to do something together. And our, our initial idea was we wanted them to like send us please <laughs> to like, go, I don't know, we were just being very you know ambitious, but then we're like, okay, let's start out with something smaller online. And we had already created the concept and we're working on when we were like, our first one was on March 31st and we we're like planning everything came up with the name, like we were, you know, did the slides, like everything. And then COVID hit and it was like in a way perfect timing because then everybody wanted to get online and enjoy, you know, mm -hmm. relaxing, you know, spa facial and, you know, a glass of wine or whatever. But I'm very proud that I did put myself out there to do that, that we really went for it. And we were just, we did that on our own. We, of course we asked the company for, you know, can we have some you know, right. promotions and stuff? But that was like our initial, like, we're going to do this. And now it's literally like this huge wave of momentum in the company. Like it's completely transformed. Good Everybody's you. asking, you know, they want to learn from us about the sip and scrubs. And I mean, it's, we had people even all, all across the world that are doing Love these. It. So it's really cool. Yay. <laughs> now, now go find another one. I know. <laughs> right? How about you? What, what are you proud of? Uh, my longevity with the hmm. company. 
you know, being being here for in the same company for fifteen outlasting years, outlasting everybody. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people come. You no, know, I got it. I, I, there's there's a, a it's 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 a little sick part of me that is kind of okay when somebody else quits <laughs> because I didn't. You know what I mean? I outlasted another one. Yeah. You know that person too, didn't last as long as I. Like I'm Iron Man. I'm gonna be here forever. Uh, so it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, too. yeah. In a way, just be just because it's. I don't know. I don't know what, like, just is in me that just loves. I love my company. I mm-hmm. love our products. I love. I, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know the grass isn't greener in other companies. Like, but there's been there's been days when it has. Of course, been yeah. Great. And you mm-hmm. you had a choice to be distracted or stay focused. Absolutely. What yeah. caused you to stay focused? You know, I made a commitment to myself mm-hmm. at the very beginning that. I was going to figure out how to succeed in this company with, you know, where I started because I love it or die trying. Mm. <laughs> I mean, literally, I think that's I would, what's required actually yeah. for success in, in, in any business is uh, an obsession and a total commitment that I'm going to the top Yeah, or, or, or I'm going to be dead on the side of the road. That was, that was basically yeah. from day one, that was my, my attitude. And so just throughout all the times, like I just, I don't know, I just kept going and going and going. And, and then it's, it's interesting to see over the time, like, like um, being able to develop a reputation of, of being consistent with our company and having um, all these new opportunities open up to us because we did stay and mm. we did continue to grow. And so, and you know how you say companies like go through phases of growth, right? Like, yep. so we've, when we started, our company was like in this momentum phase. And like you said, when there's a leadership gap, then there's a correction. And um, that happened too. And people left and people, some people expected that to be like the normal thing that it would grow forever. Very naive, right? Yeah. Um, but we, uh, we, we stayed through that, that thing. And now we're back into a growth curve where we're actually back on a momentum scale again. Um, so, you know, knowing that, okay, we made the right decision, you know, in this case to stay. And um, I think I think that's probably the thing I'm most proud of is, is it's being able to to be a full time income earner in this yeah. industry and love it. Mm-hmm. Let's let's look at it a different way. What what's a um, a huge disaster or bad moment or bad situation <laughs> that ended up ultimately being a good thing? Is there anything you can think of that was just like, oh, that really sucked, <laughs> or that but it ended up being a good thing? Oh, well, I mean my my whole health. Your health thing. Health thing was like, yeah, that ended hey, up being a good thing. Wow, you know, because it's helping other people. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, even at the end when I was like, okay, this, I'm gonna be done. Like I was almost like in my mind, like saying, like, thank you for coming. You can leave now. Like I appreciate you coming to, you know, make me pause for a moment. Now you can go, and now I'm gonna go. You know, right. that was kind of it was it was in a, in an indirect way. I was thankful for it. Yeah, happening. Yeah. What you? The company changed the shake formulation. So One big year. product change. Big product change, and and it sucked. It sucked, and it became like a self fulfilling prophecy because all the team members, not just our team, but like the cross line leaders and everybody we we talked to, was. It was like reverse law of attraction because the more you talk about it and the more you're upset with it, then you attract more negative business and then you notice your business going down. And, and so it, it went on for about a year, year and a half. The company um, actually pivoted, um, brought back the old shakes. Um, they, like, I mean, like new Coke and old Coke. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but, but so how they handled it was so great because, I mean, they, they didn't try and like sugarcoat it. Like they acknowledged that that wasn't the right move and let's move forward and like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought, you know, cause again, I think we also expect our network marketing company to be perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I did and expect like, like there's some, they're people just like us doing trial and error and trying, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But as a distributor who's naive, you, you think that they're just going to do everything perfectly. You know, so um, that, those are things I learned is like that they're they're growing, too. And the way they handled it and the way they kind of shifted and, and, and everything fixed that. But I think that was when a lot of people left, mm. too. And that opened up so many new doors for us who stayed. 
Mm. And uh, we got we got actually asked to be on this team. It's called the All Star Team for our company. I think it's only about twenty distributorships mm -hmm. in the United States and Canada. Kind of like an IDC, but it's. Yep. Um, but it's more it's, the people who are doing it. it. It's basically the people who are still working it, mm -hmm. not yeah. just in retirement mode, you know. Mm -hmm. And to be asked to be on that and to have um, the like the perks associated with it, but also the ability to give back to our company, right? You know, because we're the ones still building it and building it, building a solid foundation. And and now again to have this new growth happening with our company is very exciting. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, the, the, you talk about um, becoming a little disillusioned the company made a mistake or your upline or whatever and people uh, they talk about being disillusioned as a bad thing um, being disillusioned is just the elimination of an illusion mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that's just the truth mm -hmm. so I remember being the same way you know uh, I had my mentors that I looked up to from a distance and I got to know them and I went oh <laughs> they have some problems. <laughs> they don't have everything figured out. Um, and, and at first it really messed me up because I put some of them on such a big pedestal mm -hmm. that like, oh my gosh, they could do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything they say is gold. And then I got to know them backstage, off stage, you know, when they were, weren't turned on. And I went, oh, Huh. Like one of them would, you know, portray himself a particular way, but he smoked. Um, mm -hmm. And I went, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm not uh, judging the smoking, but it's just like he was kind of portraying himself health related. He ended up dying of em emphysema. Oh. Um, but it took me a minute to go, wait a minute. First of all, because somebody had told me, don't meet your mentors because you never know what you're going to find. Mm -hmm. Keep them in your mind as an aspirational thing, but don't meet them. And I, I, I've learned that that's bad advice, actually. To meet them and understand that all of us have our stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of it's public, some of it's private, some of it's big, and some of it's wild contradictions. But, you know, I grew up in the church. And, and and sometimes there'd be a flawed preacher, yeah, right. That and there's an old saying, a biblical saying, that the 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 word doesn't doesn't return void. In other words, um, even if it's a flawed person giving truth, it doesn't make the truth wrong. Yeah, yeah. if they are a hypocrite on a, some other aspect of their life, mm -hmm. the truth is still the truth. Yeah, and they might be able to deliver that truth in a way that you can hear it. But don't let the fact that they're a hypocrite over here change the way that you think about what they said to you because what they said to you still has value. The truth is the truth. Um, so when my companies, you know, that the company that I worked for made mistakes, I learned to put that in its right perspective mm -hmm. and to take responsibility for what I did with it. When my leaders made mistakes, when my upline was disappointing. I didn't let it d d disillusion me to the point that it would knock me out. It just took the illusion off that they're just a human being. I've got my responsibilities. They've got theirs. They've got to live with their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if that person's screwing around behind the back of their spouse, it doesn't need to mess up my, you know, the fact that they have some wisdom. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't need to mm -hmm. totally mess me up. I can't, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, or I need to put them in a super judgmental place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just an interesting, it's kind of like growing up, yeah. you know, yeah. that like, if you ever had a teacher in school that you were really admired and then you saw him on the weekend, you went, what? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Anderson is doing crazy stuff out at the, <laughs> you know, at the, at the bar. <laughs> like, wow, what are they doing? You know, you look at Mr. Anderson a little bit differently. But I think it's part of just growing up, taking the mm -hmm. taking the scales off of your eyes and being able to see the world for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, both of you have, have longevity in our profession. You've got success inside of our profession. I know it's just early stage for you, even though you've been around for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your next level, it's about, it's about how many people you're going to serve, how big your footprint's going to be, mm -hmm. what your contribution's going to be in the world. Um, start again with you. 
somebody is either looking at network marketing or they are inside of network marketing and they want to have success. What advice do you have for them in, in pursuing their dreams here inside of this business? I'd say go for it because I mean, if it's something. There, what does go for it mean though? Um, other than just other doing than it. Other than just doing it. I guess it's it's go for it is is take the steps, try it out, see um, the people that who are inviting you to this, and if that's somebody who you really want to work with, because like we've talked about the relationships, like it's definitely going to be something where it's people that you want to work with mm -hmm. and surround yourself with, and who are going to uplift you and want you to succeed as well. And I mean, just the relationships in general. Like that. So that's somebody taking a look. What if somebody's involved and they want to go to the next level? What advice do you have for them? Um, get in the mastermind. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, that's one thing. Uh, I would say uh, actually go and find uh, different personal development and leadership seminars, workshops. Go do those, work on yourself because that's really going to help you propel yourself to the next level because you've got to actually be in that space yourself to get there. But growing, um, I mean, the whole Yeah, you're the thing. asset. Yeah, you're the it's one. It's not your warehouse and it's not your inventory and it's mm -hmm. not your proprietary uh, patents or any of that stuff. You. It's you. You. Yeah. So the, 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 the in, in our business, the more you grow you, the more your income grows, yeah. the more your legacy grows. I mean, and it's, you grow you by a little, you can grow your business by a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned that early on. It's like, like, man, a little bit invested in developing me has a like an exponential mm -hmm. impact on the group. So I, I, I like have a responsibility mm -hmm. to develop me. Yeah. Because if I don't, I'm I'm minimizing the opportunity. Yeah, you're your biggest asset to to yeah. grow and succeed in whatever it is that you're doing, network marketing, your relationships, just in general, like even our marriage too. I mean. There's yeah. so much that we've done and we've grown and we've learned about each other that have really helped our relationship. Because I mean, we've got sure. different personalities, but you just you never know how much that's really going to affect everything. Yeah, and just learning and yeah, growing yourself. What advice do you have for people? So, number one advice for spouses or part people dating and and doing network marketing together is to go to events together. So like you never want to have like one person go to the event and then wish your spouse was there to hear the stuff. Like if you have an opportunity to take your spouse with you, that's what even I would if say. your spouse is not actively working the business yeah. with you, just mm -hmm. to come and and absorb it a little bit. Go go to um, and not just the company events. Go to GoPro. Go to any third party leadership event. Um, and learn as a couple and be committed to growing together and make it like a thing, like it's our couple thing. We're going to go to this seminar for, for, for whatnot. Um, if I think back on our 15 years, I mean, Crystal and I have gone, we went to Danny Johnson seminars early on, mm -hmm. um, but for like two years, like 2012 through 2014, which I mean, we were like, actually we we're dating, we weren't doing so well. And then we learned about the four different personality quadrants and we learned that I'm the analytical and money motivated and she's the fun and money motivated mm -hmm. and the analytical and the fun don't actually, um, naturally work well together. And so I was kind of mean because I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you like this? You know? And so when we learned the, those, those quadrants of personalities and I said, Oh, this, my wife is a, a sapphire and I need to talk to her in this way to help her um, feel good and, and, and get the most out of like her uh, as far as like what she wants to um, how she would feel about the relationship nice. that changed everything hmm. and she also knew my personality so that like saved our relationship you know and then part of it was getting married like that was part of that culture when we were going to those trainings and because we're really not religious and so it was like should we do this? And, and then it was like the best decision we ever made. It was to get married, mm. you know? So, but I mean, it was from going to personal growth and development seminars. You know, we've done landmark seminars now with this no, uh, next level mastermind um, for, with you for a year. Like that's, that's awesome, you know, but we've always done that. Like we've done um, even stuff that was more like online based. We did uh, a money boot camp, money mentality thing. 
um, we're always doing something outside of our company. Like our company, we go to all our company stuff sure. for sure. But we're always still to get that extra edge working on some type of leadership. Some, so your, some your advice is to engage in however you can grow. Yeah, exactly. And, and also hire and, coaches. And, and involve your involve your loved ones whenever mm-hmm. whenever you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Involve your loved ones and then also bring your team members. Like when, whatever, whatever phase we're going through with our personal growth and development, we bring our team members and invite them to, to join at their levels too. Mm. You know, they're, whatever they can do. So... Yeah, I mean, and that creates a great life, you know, like they say, the, the, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your relationships. And that is really what we get when we're working on ourselves and we're meeting all these great people. It's just a great full life. Yeah. You know, do you have so, a mission statement? Or do you have a mission statement or kind of a, a motto for how you live your life? Is yours just to have fun? Mine is like, <laughs> ha- yeah, it's basically have fun. Enjoy what you're have doing. Fun, be um, happy. Yeah, be happy. Be, you know, be around the people that make you happy and just, just, it's okay. Everything's yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. Like everything's going to be <laughs> fine. How about you? Do you have a mission statement or motto in your life? So um, I don't have like a, a, a written statement. I, I should make one, but my, my thing has always been like wisdom. I always want, I would like, my goal is, is enlightenment. My goal is to, um, just to, to raise my ability, my wisdom to the max that it can possibly be done. And in my early 20s, I wanted to be a Buddhist monk for a season because I thought that was going to be the best way to like, you know, do that. I realized later, though, that you could still become enlightened and not, not have to go down. That right, path. right. <laughs> but like, you know, that type of um, just it's all about for me, it's just about like spiritual growth, just all type of growth, I guess you could say. Yeah, would be the main thing. Well, Jared and Crystal, um, this has been fun, and thank you for your contribution so far. And I'm excited for your next chapter, whatever that's going to be. I know it's going to be bigger. I know it's going to be bolder. I know it's going to be more fun. Yes. Yes. I know it's going to be having a big contribution in the world. Uh, So I appreciate you coming in and being a part of it. Oh, thank you, Eric. Thanks for having us, and thanks for all your contributions. Yes. We love being in the Next Level Mastermind, and we've been going to GoPro events for like seven years. Um, it's made a huge, huge impact in our life and our business. So thank you. We are all just warming up. That's right. I know. Can't wait. I'm excited. Thank you so much for having us.